continue to track Hurricane Irma. The new 5 a.m. advisory on Hurricane Irma is just in from the National Hurricane Center. The powerful storm is battering the southeastern Bahamas and has its sights set on South Florida. It sure does. And we have weather team coverage for you this morning. Meteorologist Dave Warren standing by with details on the impact here locally. First, though, let's get the latest on Irma with meteorologist Lisette Gonzalez. Hey, Jean and Lauren, and good morning to all of you at home. Unfortunately, we're not having any good news this morning with the latest 5 a.m. advisory. Really, not much has changed. Irma is still a Category 4 hurricane. Now, the winds have decreased, but only slightly. Uh, 155 mile per hour sustained winds right now, and moving west northwest at 16 miles per hour. It is located 55 miles northwest of Great Inagua Island, and it is forecast to move west northwest and maybe a little bit more in a westerly track here as we look ahead throughout the night tonight into tomorrow could be moving across the northern coast of Cuba or just north of this island and then of course taking that turn to the north when that turn happens will determine uh, whether we see that I stay offshore or directly make that fall across South Florida but it is looking more and more likely that we will see a direct impact here as right now the National Hurricane Center is forecasting that the center of Irma could be right over the upper keys as we head into Sunday morning or around Sunday late morning midday and then likely continuing to move northward up the spine of the state of Florida. Pretty much everyone is included in that cone here and it'll continue to move up the state of Florida as we head in through even Monday. So this is going to be a long duration event and yes, it is looking like it could be destructive and even life threatening. So please take the necessary necessary measures to prepare if you haven't done so already. Then a tropical storm moving into the southeast Georgia, the Carolinas as we head into early next week. Now we are seeing the highest threat for hurricane winds across South Florida and even parts of the Keys and that is the reasoning behind a hurricane warning in place for all of South Florida and also parts of the Bahamas, Cuba. Hurricane watch is now starting to go up along the east and west coast side here of uh, parts of central Florida and we're going to likely continue to see those watches and warnings going up for the entire state. Storm surge warnings watches in place because we could see life threatening storm surge anywhere from three to 10 feet. And in terms of the tropical storm force wind probabilities, of course, that is high, remains high, and we will be dealing with tropical storm force winds and also the likelihood of hurricane force winds. So when will we see those gusty squalls and tropical storm force winds arrive? Well, as soon as tonight, and that means your window of opportunity to prepare, it is closing, time is running out, and you will really need to hunker down as soon as tonight, but especially by tomorrow morning. Rainfall potential, well, we could see anywhere from 8 to 12 inches of rain through the weekend, potentially up to 20 inches of rain in some spots. So yes, we could see some flooding due to some heavy rain, but taking a look at Irma as it continues to slam parts of the Bahamas and that very well-defined eye, that hurricane warning means hurricane conditions expected in the next 36 hours. The worst period will be tonight and especially tomorrow, Sunday through Monday. Threats, extreme winds, devastating storm surge, flooding, heavy rain, and even the risk of tornadoes. For more on what you can expect, we have meteorologist Dave Warren here. Yeah, 36 hours uh, with that warning in effect. You still have 24 hours, though. Uh, that wind will really start to pick up overnight tonight, so make sure everything is done today. Uh, get ready to re get ready for that hurricane supply kit. Make sure everything's all set to go. Top off the gas. There wasn't a lot of long line this morning. Make sure all your batteries and flashlights are ready to go. Board up everything and make sure it's all set to go. Uh, here's what to expect. Uh, first off, these wind speeds, when we talk about tropical storm force wind speed, 39 to 73, and that will just continue uh, to increase from up to category 4, 130 to 156. Above 157 is that category 5. By the time the storm gets here, easily seeing wind gusts over 100 miles an hour across the area with these hurricane force winds. Uh, now, storm surge is the biggest problem, and uh, the uh, risk continues the farther south you go, expecting 5 to 8 feet in that highlighted area. That's why the evacuations issued east of Route 1. Uh, that 5 to 8 feet, that is above the surface, though, so that's what you're dealing with. Uh, and with with this storm surge could be life threatening. Uh, that's the biggest problem. The biggest concerns here with these storms five to eight feet to the south of Key Biscayne. It gets even higher though. Once you get south of Palmetto Bay, there's that extreme storm surge risk. Uh, this area is very prone uh, to this and this is ahead of the storm. So when we talk about that storm arriving, uh, they're moving up the coast and in, inland there through Sunday. Well, this will be happening before that uh, with that strong east wind, that strong wind pushing all this water inland and the risk continues there around 
around the Florida Peninsula. Uh, you can see that can rise several feet in just a few minutes, uh, and that weighs nearly a ton, so it can easily uh, move a car. Just one to feet, uh, one to two feet of a storm surge. Uh, today we're into the mid 80s, and we're climbing into the 90s. Another hot day as you continue to prepare, and just a few showers developing. But the timing of when we'll first see those first uh, outer bands of the storm coming in. I'll look at that a little bit later.